But I tell you today that you aren't saved to be tolerant of sin. I want you to understand today that you were saved to be intolerant of sin. You were saved to be intolerant of the way of the world. Do you hear me here today? You see, as God does not abide with wickedness, I want you to understand today that in your true identity, you ought not be abiding with wickedness. Again, I ask you this week, do you know who you are? And if you do know who you are, are you being true to your character? Are you, in other words, being true to your identity? You see, over the past few weeks, I have asked this question about whether or not you know who you are with the hope of inspiring you to seek, to learn, to know, and to understand who you are, that you are, that you are meant to be a child of God. All of us, everyone in the world today, no matter their race, no matter their nationality, we are all meant to be a child of God. All of us, mankind, we were all created in the image and in the likeness of the Lord. Now, when you come to know that you are a child of God, then I say to you that you should always be true to the identity, to the fact that you are a child of God. But sadly, many of us, we treat every day like it is Halloween. We play dress up. We aren't true to our identity as a child of God. We act out of character. We aren't playing the part. We aren't true to our identity of walking in the way of Christ. And so again, I ask you this week, do you know who you are? And on top of that, I ask you this week, are you being true to your character as a child of God? Are you being true to yourself? Are you being true to the Lord? Who are you? So how does one go about walking in the identity of Christ? What is the identity of Christ that we are supposed to walk in? We may begin to wonder. Well, Jesus, he said that the true believers, that we are to act out of love. Stop me if you have heard this one before. The true believer is supposed to love the Lord with all of their heart, with all of their mind. Have you heard that one before? And again, the true believer in that love, we are supposed to guess what? You've heard this one, I believe. You're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You're supposed to, in other words, love all people, no matter who they are. You are supposed to love. And Jesus, he, again, he taught that earlier in his ministry, just as he did late in his ministry, that the character of those who are of true faith is again, it is based on the love of God. And Jesus, he said that we are to not only love those that love us because that's easy to be done. Anybody can do that. And Jesus, he said that we are to love the stranger. We are to love those that despise us those that spitefully use us, those that persecute us, we are supposed to even love those that hate. That's yeah, a strong word, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 
H A T E. We are supposed to love those that even hate us. Are you being true to your character? Jesus said that when we move in this manner of grace, which is again of God, when we move with God's grace, when we move with his compassion, when we move with his love, Jesus said that we will be perfect. Jesus said that we will be perfect just as our father in heaven is perfect. Our father in heaven is holy and righteous. Guess what your character is supposed to be? Holy and righteous. Who are you? Now, when Paul taught Jesus' lesson about who we are supposed to be, He summed it up by saying that we are to aim to be imitators of the Lord. We ought to be imitators exactly like our heavenly father. Is that who you are today? Or are you wearing a costume today? Are you cosplaying as someone else? Are you wearing a mask? Are you not being true to yourself? Are you acting out of character? Who are you? Now, many of us, we already know what our character is supposed to be. We already know that we should be striving. We should be living like Christ. We already know that, don't we? But many of us who proclaim to be a child of God, even though we know this, we aren't doing it. We are acting out of character rather than moving out of love. Some of us, we move out of bitterness rather than moving out of love. Some of us, we move out of wrath. Some of us, we move out of anger. Some of us, we, we move out of hatred. And and we know that these things do not produce the righteousness of God, but we do it anyway. I've been talking about this with my brother over the past couple of weeks about how people seem to desire nothing but, but hatred, the tearing down of others and their hard work. We know that we are supposed to support each other. We know that we are supposed to lift up each other but we are too busy joining in with the rest of the world, hammering down on each other. It doesn't sound like the character of Christ to me. See, we often blame the devil for, for when we act out of character. You chuckle about it, but it's real, ain't it? When we do something that we know is wrong, We'll say, oh, the devil made me do it. (laughs) When do we stop and take accountability for when we act out of character? Nine times out of ten, we know when we have done wrong. But all nine of those times, or the majority of them, I'll give us a little bit of credit here. I saw Deanna look at me, so I'll give us a little bit of credit here. (laughs) Most of the time, we know the devil didn't make us do it. (laughs) So what what causes us to to do this? What causes us to, to act out of character? When we, as the child of God, when we know that we are supposed to do better than than what we do, that we are supposed to be better than what we can drop ourselves, that we can stoop down to be. What causes us to act out of character? I took a look at this and thought about it for a moment, and I found myself in the sixth chapter of the book of Hebrews. Scripture spoke about being sluggish. And that's where the answer was. 
You see, the true cause behind our acting out of character is that moment in time where we go to sleep on our faith. When we are sluggish, when we become complacent in our identity as a child of God, when we let up for a moment, we let up for that moment. And that's when our old man creeps back out. An old man has a big grin, a big smile on his face because old man can reveal himself to others. It caused us to act poorly, to act out of character. As I have said to all of you before, I'll say it again to you. Complacency is a very great adversary for the child of God. We have to be very weary of this. We know that, that complacency, it is a very big and great danger for us because we remember the third chapter of the book of Revelation. We remember the church of the Laodiceans and we remember that it was their complacency that made them lukewarm in their soul. And because we know about the church of the Laodiceans, we know that they suffered greatly because that they were complacent. And we know that their complacency led them to having an apathetic spirit. And we know because of that, that the Lord despises the spirit of complacency. We know that God doesn't encourage us to have a spirit that grows complacent. So, Let's consider again for a moment here. How does one become complacent in their hearts? We must consider this because there is a correction that we must make. Because complacency leads us to acting out of character. And we as God's children, we shouldn't desire to act out of character. So let's again think about this for a moment. One of the first places where complacency, where it actually starts, is through gained knowledge. And this one is a scary one for me. Because again, for the past three Sundays, I've been trying and hoping and to inspire all of us to seek the knowledge and the understanding of knowing who exactly we are. That we are a child of God. However, I have found out in life that that many of us, when we come to realize, to know that we are a child of God, many of us, we become complacent. Many of us, we actually stop walking by faith. Once we come to gain that knowledge and that understanding of, of knowing that we belong to God, that we are a special treasure in his eyes. Now, now, what do I mean by this? You see, some of us, when we gain that knowledge that we are a child of God, we get up, we, we join the church, we are, are baptized, and after we are baptized, after we come out of the water, after we have the bread and the juice, our first communion, we, we think that, that we got it made. We think to ourselves, I'm saved. There's nothing else for me to do. So with that knowledge, we kick back and we, that's what we do. We don't even go back to church. We don't open up the Bible again. We don't pray. Where's the fellowship? We're supposed to be in fellowship with the Lord, but hey, I've been baptized. I'm saved. I don't need nothing else. Yeah, the Lord, he calls on his children to know him. The Lord, he calls on his children to 
to understand him intimately. Do you understand what I mean by that? You ought to know God. You ought to understand him like the back of your hand. When you are in fellowship with the Lord, that is how well you are supposed to know him. How can you know him that well if, if you think you already got it made? If after you've been baptized and, you know, you maybe went to church maybe a couple of months. Some of us, we, you know, we, we go to church for a few years and then we say, oh, it ain't doing nothing for me. And we stop. How can we know the Lord like the back of our hand? if we cut off our fellowship with him. Now, history shows us what happens when one knows that they are special in in God's eyes. It shows us this through Israel and through Judah, who lived off of the fact that they were God's chosen people. And so they were stuck on that in their hearts. And because they were God's chosen people, they didn't think they had to do anything. They didn't even think that they needed to be in fellowship with him. They thought that they could go off, that they could forsake him, that they could worship any other guys that they wanted to, that they, like we saw in our Sunday school lesson today, that they could be like all of the other people. And then on one day, they could go and they they can offer up a a sacrifice, which in the first chapter of Isaiah, the Lord said, I'm tired of these vain offerings from you. They ain't doing nothing for me. In other words, the children of Israel, the Israelites, Judah, they thought that they could act out of character 99% of the time. And then at 1%, they could go and say, hey, Lord, I at least offered you up a sacrifice. And they believed that that would please the Lord. They believed again because that they were his chosen people. They had it made. They didn't need anything else. Even in the days of Jesus, when Jesus came to the Jews with the divine truth, the Jews, they said, don't need it. Jesus said, if you live by this truth, it will make you free, free from sin. And they said, nope. We are Abraham's descendants. We've never been in bondage is what they said. That's the, I got it made mindset. I tell you today that the have it made mindset, it is incredibly dangerous. If you as a child of God, you think you have it made already, I tell you today that it is incredibly dangerous. And the reason why it is incredibly dangerous is because there's no room for growth. There's no room for improvement where we as the children of the Lord, we are always supposed to be growing in who we are. We are always, in other words, supposed to be maturing in our identity of who we are. You see, I say to you today that if you don't grow in your faith, your faith, it becomes stagnant. And stagnant faith, I want you to understand today That is dead faith. I hope you hear me here today. And I want you to understand today that dead faith, that is completely out of the character of one who is a child of God. Your faith, it should be alive and well. See, dead faith is why so many of us are struggling today. I ain't talking about struggling to gain possessions. I'm talking about struggling to stay on the path of holiness and righteousness. You must be alive in who you are as a child of God. You must be alive in your soul in order for you to be holy and righteous. Your faith must be alive and well. If your faith is dead, how can you be holy and righteous? How can you be true to your character? That's why so many of us are struggling to overcome all of our trials and our tribulations because we aren't being true to who we are as a child of God. 
you are not going to get to your blessing. Mm -hmm. You are not going to overcome anything if you are walking out of fellowship with the Lord. Do you hear me here today? If you are denying who you are as a child of God, don't think for a second that the Lord is going to move for you. He's going to sit still and wait for you to come back if you come back. Know thyself. Know who you are. Another reason that has led some believers to be complacent in who they are is tolerance. Now, let me explain this one for a moment here today. Many of us, we say that we live in a wicked world, don't we? Many of us, we see sin all around us, but how many of us step up and step out to say anything about it? Many of us, we can see something wrong. Many of us, we don't say anything about it. Again, I referenced the Good Samaritan in the Sunday school lesson today. We can see somebody needing help on the side of the road, and many of us will just... Won't even call 911. That's what I said in the Sunday school lesson. Many of us, we see something wrong. We won't say anything because we don't want to keep up a fuss, right? Mm -hmm. we, 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 we don't want to, to, to make a mess, right? We, we don't want to cause any problems. We, we just want there to be peace. And so we become tolerant of wickedness because we don't want to say anything mm -hmm. because we don't want to cause a mess. We, we want there to be peace, and that's how we do it. We compromise in our hearts. We compromise our faith. Is that what you think the Lord desires of us? To, to tolerate wickedness? To, to compromise our character? To compromise who we are? Let's ask the Lord that question. Right? Let's ask, yeah, let's ask the one that, that went to the temple and saw wickedness taking place into the temple there, and he barged into the temple, and he turned over tables and said, you done made my house a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. Oh, he didn't have any problems about causing a disturbance, if you will. Why are you afraid? Mm -hmm. You see, in, in his second letter to Timothy, Paul wrote that the believer and their true character should be ready to testify, ready to preach in season and out of season. Paul said that we must be ready at all times to convince, to rebuke, to exhort with all patience and teaching of the divine truth. Are you ready at all times to stand in the divine truth, to minister the divine truth to somebody somewhere? Paul said to Timothy that the day would come when many would turn away from sound doctrine. And in that day, he said that the child of God must be ready to stand for what is holy and righteous. As you have heard me say before, the day of spiritual apathy, it is upon us. It's growing more and more in our world today. How many of us are tolerating living in this world of sin, mm -hmm. tolerating mm -hmm. the apathy for the Lord all around us. Mm -hmm. And if it's not our tolerance of sin, again, many of us, we are ashamed. We are too afraid to speak out. Mm -hmm. We are afraid to stand in the trueness of our identity as a child of God. To be ashamed and afraid is also, again, out of character for the child of God. You see, Paul, he wrote to Timothy again that the believer should never be ashamed to testify of the good news, to testify of the Lord, because in our testimony, we know that the Lord did good for us. We know that God saved us. 
that he gave his only begotten son for us so that we don't have to be that old man so that we can walk in the newness of life in our new identity. That is what we should desire for all of those that are around us. But many of us, again, we are too afraid to share that news with somebody somewhere that may desire that wants that good news. You see, Paul, he had gained the spirit of boldness to which he had absolutely no shame to move in who he was as a child of God, as a servant of the Lord. You see, Paul, he was the one who said to Timothy that for the cause of ministering the good news, he would never be ashamed because he knew who he believed in and he knew who he was in his heart. That was my dad's favorite scripture. How many of us are not afraid to stand in the trueness of our identity as a child of God? Do you know who you are? Do you know that again, you are a child of the Lord? Do you know what your character is supposed to be? Well, if you don't know in the 28th chapter of Proverbs and the first verse, the proverb tells us that the righteous are to be bold as a lion. How many of us are that way today? See, I say, I tell you that it is time for us to stand with boldness. It is time for us to stand boldly in being true to who we are as a child of God. The day has come for you to be true to who you are. It is time for you to take off that costume of being ashamed. It is time for you to take off that mask of being fearful. It is time for you to move with great boldness in this world today. Again, I ask you, are you being true to character or are you acting out of character today? Now, to be bold and true to who we are, the writer of the book of Hebrews there in the sixth chapter and the first verse we'll see encourages believers to lead the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ and to go on to perfection. Now this statement, it speaks to the fact that again, you and I, as the children of God, we are to always be growing we are to always be maturing in our identity, in our character. You see, we should always be growing. You know, we grew from the sinner to one who was a baby in the faith. But as a baby grows in the world, we are to grow in our faith. We are to grow to being strong in our faith. We are to grow to be elders in this walk of faith, you are to grow in your identity. Knowing that the Lord loved the world and that the Lord gave his only begotten son to save the world. That is the basic principle, the foundation of our faith. And as much as I love the third chapter of John's gospel in the 16th verse, and as much as I say that is all that anyone needs in order to be saved, I say to you today that foundations, they are meant to be built upon. We are to build on the third chapter of John's gospel and the 16th verse. That is why the Lord gave us more scripture. That is why we have more teachings foundations they are meant to be built upon. So with that in mind, we'll see there in the 11th verse of the sixth chapter of Hebrews that the writer stated that the child of God should move with diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. You are not to grow weary in your identity as a child of God. You are to keep on growing. Yes, the world, it can try to beat you down. The world, yes, it can try to, to draw you in the way things are. Make you accepting of the way things are. 
But I tell you today that you aren't saved to be tolerant of sin. I want you to understand today that you were saved to be intolerant of sin. You were saved to be intolerant of the way of the world. Do you hear me here today? You see, as God does not abide with wickedness, I want you to understand today that in your true identity, you ought not be abiding with wickedness. In your true identity as a child of God, you are to remove sin from you. You are to cut off what is unrighteous, what is wicked, what is sinful. You are to put it away from you. Now, through our diligence, we should all be abiding by the word of God. We should diligently meditate on the word of God. We should diligently study his word. And as I said to you earlier this year, we should study his word so that his word becomes a part of us so that it becomes a part of our being. You see, as we learned when the word of God becomes a part of our being, who we are, we turn into, we become a righteous tree of God. Do y'all remember that series of sermons? You are meant to be a righteous tree of God that bears fruit that is holy and righteous. From that fruit, Jesus said that your fruit, it is to be not temporary. It is to be long lasting. Do you remember that? You see, you today, you should desire to be that righteous tree of God rather than that, that deprived desert shrub that we saw in my sermon last week. That is not who you are meant to be. You shouldn't desire to be that. So in our growth, we should diligently consult the Lord. We are in fellowship with him. One of the best things that you and I can consult the Lord about, one of the best things that you and I should be praying to the Lord about today is for the Lord to keep us encouraged. You and I, we should be praying for the Lord to to keep us uplifted. We should be praying for the Lord to keep us motivated in our walk of faith. We need to be motivated to to walk in the spirit despite all of the things that may come our way. The things that try to compromise and and corrupt us in, in our soul. You see, to the Galatians, Paul wrote that when we walk in the spirit, we are able to walk true to who we are as a child of God. And when we walk true to who we are as a child of God, Paul said that we are able to produce the fruits of the spirit. As I have said in this series, when you are true to who you are, you will have the power to overcome. When you are true to who you are, you have the power to overcome Satan and in all of his temptations and you will bear that fruit. When you are true to yourself as a child of God, I say to you that you will stand the storms of life that that try to prevail against you and you will produce the fruits that is holy and righteous. Because again, you in your identity, you are a righteous tree of God. When those that are around you, when they try to compromise you, when they try to corrupt your soul, when you stand boldly, In your identity as a child of God, you will not compromise. You will not falter. You will not be corrupted in your soul. You will still stand tall as that righteous tree of God. And you bear fruit that is holy and righteous. Do you know who you are today? Are you being true to character? Are you bearing that holy and righteous fruit? See how it all circles back around from what we saw at the beginning of the year. At the start of this series, I spoke of just how important it is for you to know who you are for the reason that there is power in knowing who you are. 
However, here in my key verse for today, we'll see another reason given to us as to why we must live knowing exactly who we are. We'll see why it is that we must be true to our identity. There in the seventh verse, in the first of my key verses, the writer speaks of, of the earth and its character. The earth, the writer said, it drinks in the rain that falls upon it. And from the drinking in of that rain, the earth is able to bear herbs that are useful to those who cultivate the land and are able to receive its blessings from the Lord. Now, for those that happen to glance at that scripture, it's just another verse. It, it won't mean much. But because I preached about the harvest of God in a series of sermons earlier this year, this verse has much significance for us because we know that God is coming for his harvest. You see, the writer of the book of Hebrews is likening the earth to all of us, which I did earlier this year. Now, if you don't remember that series of sermons, let me remind you today that you and I, we drink in the blessings that we receive from the Lord. And we drink in those blessings for the purpose, as I have been saying so far in the sermons, for the purpose of producing the righteousness of God. You see, the child of God, I want you to understand today, you are meant to be a blessing. That is your identity in the world, a blessing. When you are true to character, you are a blessing. You're a blessing in this world, not a curse. As Jesus said, you are meant to, again, bear long lasting fruit that will outlive you. That is, I say to you today, a blessing. A blessing is what makes us happy and content in our soul, not temporarily, but for all of eternity. You have that power. However, if you're acting out of character, you won't be able to produce the righteousness of God. See, it is very important that we heed these words from the writer of the book of Hebrews, who will see say there in the eighth verse that if it, the earth bears thorns and briars, it, the thorn and the briars, they are rejected. And the writer said that they are near to being cursed. We talked about that in, in my sermon last week. The fool is cursed to destruction. And we'll see that the writer says there that the thorns and the briars end is to be burned. Now I want you to understand that, that within these two verses, the writer is again speaking what should again be us being true to our character, us living true to our character as a child of God. The reason why it is, again, so important for us to, to be true to our character, true to being a child of God, is because the writer is saying, one day you and your works, they will come under fire. Uh-oh. You and your works will come under fire. Do you understand what that means? in terms that you may understand simply, one day you will be judged by God. Do you understand that? You will come under the fire of God. Are you ready for that? Those that are being true to their character, they getting ready now for that. Those that are acting out of character, they better not show up before God wearing a mask. I preached that sermon a long time ago. It was true then and it's still true today. As I preached earlier this year, my dad's favorite song, it's a dressing up room down here and you better be getting yourselves ready down here. Know who you are now. Because if you wait, you may wait until it's too late. You see, this is why Paul said to the Corinthians that it is a small thing to be judged by the court of mankind. He knew who his judge was. See, Paul and the writer of the book of Hebrews understand that 
he, they understood that, that we must keep growing to know and to understand our true identity as a child of God. They understood that we must reach for perfection. We must strive to be holy and righteous because one day we will meet our maker. One day we will stand before our savior. One day we will come under their fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fire that they knew that they had to face, we will face it one day. Mm -hmm. The fire of the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, in his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul wrote, in the third chapter of first Corinthians and the 13th verse, if you want to see it for yourself, Paul wrote that each one's work will become clear for the day. That is the day of judgment will declare it. Paul said, because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. I want you to understand that who you are, your works, who you are, the way that you live, who you are, your actions, they will be judged by the fire of the Lord. All of us must go before the judgment seat of Christ. And Christ will determine whether you lived in a Christ-like manner, whether you were true to character or whether or not you acted out of character. Paul wrote that, if anyone's work, which he has built on the foundation of Christ, endures that fire, there in the 14th and the 15th verse, then the third chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul said that they will receive a reward. I don't know about you, but I want to receive a reward for being true to character. Yeah, yeah. Then Paul, he said there, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. Mm -hmm. But then he added on that person will be saved yet as through the fire. Again, you can't lose salvation. I want to make sure that I make that clear from that verse. You cannot lose salvation if you genuinely and sincerely walk by faith, if you have believed. However, though you may not lose salvation, if your works, who you are, if that does not endure the fire, you're not going to receive that reward that others who were true to character receive. And again, I say to you, you ought to desire to receive that reward. So you ought to desire to be true to who you are as a child of God. We should all be striving to be true to our identity and living in holiness and righteousness today. Yes, there is power in knowing who you are to be able to overcome your demons and being able to overcome your sins. And being able to grow into your final form, which is incorruptible and immortal. But I want you to understand today that at the judgment seat of Christ, Christ is going to judge whether or not we carried out our responsibility of being true to our character. I want, you, I want you to know today that you carry a great weight of responsibility. It seems that many of us have forgotten this or many of us simply don't know this today. That the child of God, we carry a responsibility to be true to who we are. You see, this reminds me of how my parents raised me. My parents, they would always tell me to be myself and to be proud of, of who I am not to let someone ever bully me for who I am. Today, the child of God lets the devil bully them. The child of God lets the world bully them to not acting as they ought to act. We supposed to live responsibly, but many of us, we begin to live irresponsibly because of the judgment of the world, because of Satan whispering in our ears. When we act out of character, we not only mislead and fail ourselves, but we mislead and we fail all of those that are around us, especially the one that looks for us to be their spiritual guides. Again, you carry a weight of responsibility to be true to your character. We must not mislead anyone away from Christ. That is a very grave sin. I hope you understand. To the Corinthians, Paul wrote, when you thus sin against the brethren, 
and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Jesus, he said, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. That's not something you ought to ever want. Don't forget who you are. Don't ignore who you are meant to be. You are meant to lead people to Christ. In your true identity, you are a blessing. You are a leader as well. So lead. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed to lead others to Christ. That is your calling. That is the identity that Christ, that the Lord has set for you to live in. So live in it. Be proud to live in that character. Don't go off cosplaying. Don't go off wearing a costume of a sinner. That will lead to your doom. That will lead to your destruction. So again, I encourage you today, know who you are. And when you know who you are, I say to you today, walk forward with boldness in your identity. You will be a blessing, not to yourself, but you'll be a blessing to all of those that are around you. Amen. 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 Amen.